you're lucky enough, I'll take you on my boat, he said, towards the start of my very first online date, which is at the top of my list for worst date of all time. I was expecting Romeo, and instead, I was sitting across from Shrek with two gold chains, and there were plenty more, if you're lucky enough, that followed that evening. He complained that he had to drive 20 minutes to meet me at a subpar restaurant when I had just driven further after having completed close to a 24-hour shift at work. He even pulled out a box of cigs, and suddenly we we're sitting there in a cloud of smoke. Our waiter knew I was having a terrible time and flashed a message to me on his pad of paper, go to the bathroom. Yet, I still said yes when he asked to go somewhere else after dinner. He called me the next day and left a long voicemail about how he thought we hit it off. I thought to myself, were we on the same date? I never responded to his call. Finding a life partner is never easy. And as a family physician, it has been a particular challenge as a female in medicine where years in school are followed by a grueling residency, sleepless nights, and there's no time for anything else, much less dating. This is why I decided to try online dating. However, I soon learned that the men I was dating were rarely honest about what they really wanted, and in some cases, who they really were. It would often take too long for someone that I had matched with to be honest about the fact that there was no future to our relationship, and instead draw things out, going on several dates before being honest about what they really wanted, and in some cases, ghosting me entirely. Generally, this is the problem with online dating. Although we may know right away that we have no future with the people we match with, we hesitate to say so and end up not being honest about our feelings. It was a situation that made me want to pull my hair out, and frankly, one that I found confusing. But I realized sometimes I was doing this on my dates as well. I guess I shouldn't have said yes to spending more time with Mr. If You're Lucky Enough. And then it occurred to me, where have I seen this behavior before? In my patients, and more surprisingly to me, in my own life as a patient. In fact, people are very rarely completely honest with their doctors. A 2018 study in the Journal of American Medical Association Network Open found that up to 81% of patients lie to their doctors at one time or another, mainly to avoid three things. Judgment, having to hear how harmful their behavior is, and embarrassment. Another documented fact is that people tend to lie on their dating profiles. According to two studies, 81% of people admitted to doing precisely that. People lie to their doctors with the exact same frequency they lie to their dates, and for many of the same reasons, with one of the more common reasons being a fear of rejection in the form of some kind of judgment. We prioritize perceived self-preservation over absolute transparency. Patients fear their doctors will judge or abandon them for various reasons. 
For example, the idea of taking, not taking, taking too much of, or taking someone else's medications. I recall having a patient who did not share he was taking more than the recommended dose of his erectile dysfunction medication, which led to a significant fainting spell while on a first date. But in all seriousness, it could have resulted in significant head trauma. Many also fail to admit how much alcohol they drink or the amount of cannabis they smoke. I had a patient who was suffering from severe abdominal pain and nausea for months. We completed an extensive workup, and we still had no answers. The next thing you know, his date is driving him to the emergency room, and he was diagnosed with something called cannabinoid hyperemesis syndrome, also known as vomiting from smoking too much for a little too long. I had no idea the extent to which this patient had been smoking marijuana. And if I had, I would have spent a significant amount of time counseling on substance use. I would have provided more reassurance. And I would have worked towards improving his quality of life. And his date probably wouldn't have recommended going to a Grateful Dead concert. <laughs> and let's not forget about the lies we tell about our diets. Patients are afraid that you will call them out if they are going through the McDonald's drive-thru every morning as they're injecting their weight loss medication and wondering why they're not losing more weight. And more concerning, even today, with the emphasis on mental health and well-being, people lie about their depression or anxiety due to fear of stigma. I had a patient who decided to stop taking their psychiatric medications and ended up being hospitalized for sudden withdrawal and a suicide attempt. My own mother told me to lie to my pediatrician about my stress at school due to fear that the doctor would not only judge me, but also her parenting. Similarly, in dating, the fear of rejection looms large, especially with online dating. One study found that it can take eight steps to meet someone in person and nine steps to develop an offline relationship. And the older you are, the more pressure you feel to find the one. We suffocate the truth due to a yearning for connection. This encourages online daters to be dishonest. With the rise of online dating, people are more prone to falsification, either of themselves or their feelings. People lie about their age, height, weight, appearance, job status, salary, political views, religious affiliations, how much medication they take for erectile dysfunction, how often they experience that weed eye, and sometimes even their hobbies. We all know that not everyone in the world loves to hike, but how many profiles have you seen that mention it? And why tell me that you are financially independent if you live in your mother's basement? We don't give one another a chance to show our true selves. This lack of honesty leads to shallow connections, disappointments, and a cycle of failed attempts to find fulfilling relationships. It wastes time and emotional bandwidth that could be invested in building genuine relationships. Similarly, and crucially in a healthcare setting, the absence of honesty can have dire consequences. Miscommunication and withholding information can lead to incorrect diagnoses, inappropriate treatments, and compromised patient health. In fact, patients have suffered from heart attacks and strokes because they did not share they were not taking their medications due to valid concerns that I could have assisted them with, such as memory loss, 
cost, undesirable or intolerable side effects, and sometimes even opening their medication bottles. When patients are honest, it results in positive health outcomes, like the athlete patient of mine who had the courage to share that his heart would often race, which prompted appropriate testing, and he was subsequently diagnosed with an arrhythmia that could have been life-threatening if it were not discovered and treated. Or, like the patient of mine who was honest about his sexual activity and was subsequently diagnosed with anal cancer, which could have potentially led to his death if not discovered. And what about the reverse? Doctors have an ethical obligation and responsibility to tell the truth. Mr. Smith, you have cancer. No one wants to say it, but physicians have to. Doctors can be kind and tell the truth. Combining insights from these very different and seemingly unconnected areas of medicine and online dating sheds light on universal human tendencies and barriers that hinder honest communication. In both scenarios, whether as a patient or someone searching for love, honesty is of pivotal importance. Being honest with your doctor can literally save your life or significantly improve the quality of it. In dating, being honest saves time and emotional energy. It's the only way to really find the relationship that you're looking for. Once I saw this, it was a lesson I had to take on board myself. At one point, I seemed to connect very well with a man I had met on a dating app. But soon enough, his ex and his ex's dog were back in the picture, and that was a red flag for me. I realized the importance of being honest, not only with him, but with myself. I mustered the courage to openly communicate my concerns, and I decided it was best to part ways. I learned that by being honest, I gave him the opportunity to be honest too. This experience was liberating, and it ultimately led me to my current partner, my husband of almost seven years, whom I did meet online. It directly asked if we were going steady pretty early on in the relationship, and I knew it was right when his direct response was, well, I love you. How's that for exclusivity? This significantly altered the trajectory of our relationship, and now we are connected by an even greater bond, the love for our five-month-old daughter. I also learned that as a physician, I can continuously improve my communication skills and engage more regularly in shared vulnerability with my patients. A lie is a choice that can drastically alter the path your life takes. Will you find authentic love? Or will you be alone? Will you be healthy, ill, or even die? So, if you're going on a date, be honest. Ask yourself how you can show up more genuinely. Empower yourself to be upfront about your intentions and expectations. And remember, if rejection is going to occur, it's better sooner than later. And what if we could just accept the feeling of rejection rather than react to it, resist it, or avoid it? If you're going to the doctor, be honest. Commit to being more open with your healthcare providers. And if you can't, ask yourself why. Is it a barrier within yourself, or do you need to find a provider that's more aligned with your health vision? Humans have a burning desire for honesty and sincere connection. We lie when we think the stakes are high. It's normal to do this. It's necessary not to. So, 
let's cultivate a culture that values transparency and open communication, and one in which we recognize that love and health are two sides of the same coin. Thank you.